Not far from England, just a little to the north in Scotland, we've got a couple of members from the group Simple Minds with us today. Welcome to the show, Derek Forbes and Jim Kerr. Hello. Hello. And welcome to Canada. I understand you just arrived last night, so yeah. you're still recovering from a hangover. Uh, and the customs official. And the customs yeah. official. It's too early to comment yet on, the, on, on any yeah. impressions you had, maybe? We'd, no, we just went to bed and had a good sleep, so... Well. Through snowballs. Pleasant dreams in Canada. Your popularity has started to pick up. I understand your uh, upcoming dates in, uh, in Toronto and in Ottawa are just about sold out. And your music is basically different. It's not the mainstream of rock and roll that's been coming from the UK and from the islands yeah. these days. How would you describe your music? Well, there's a certain um, art element in it, I think. Just now in Britain, after two years of, of the punk movement where everything was based more on, uh, I don't know, energy and things. Now there's a much more a vision coming out into the m music, a lot more image. It's not the same, uh, for two years with the same uh, cliches of anarchy and riot and all these kind of things. That's all gone and now there's much more, uh, I don't know, a melodic element. Now the bands, instead of just, just talking, can also play and um, I think, I don't know, each time we get re reviewed, I don't think anyone has ever put their, their finger on exactly what it is. But um, there's a real, we're like, we take bits from, from, from everywhere, very much influenced by um, music over the past uh, 10 years. Who are some of the people that have influenced you? Um, Eno. Uh, Brian Eno. Brian Eno, in an in a, uh, experimental sense. Lou Reed, um, Mark Roxy, early Roxy, yeah, Roxy, Mark Bowen, David Bowie, people like that. Mm -hmm. Sort of, um, I don't know, visual type type bands, uh, kind of imagey type type bands. What about futuristic type bands, like Gary Newman and uh, and his type of music? Yeah, Newman, we're we're friendly with with Newman. Uh, our, our earlier gigs in 1970. Seven seventy-eight. He used to come come along, and in fact, we did some dates with him last year. Mm. But there is, we're not. He's much more of a a machine type music. We feel there's a lot of um, like we use. I suppose you could say uh, futuristic s sounds, which come from uh, synthesizer and guitar effects. But we always hope that at, within our music there is a heart and soul, a little uh, bit of feeling. Yeah, mm. yeah, a passion that perhaps a human doesn't. Um, Play with. Yeah. I agree with you. I kind of felt that there was a little feeling missing in Gary Newman's music, very cold yeah, it's a bit, yeah. in, in many ways. How, what kind of instruments do you use? Are, do you use a lot of synthesizer in your music? Well, yeah. We use a bit, we use about five different kinds. He uses uh, Jupiter. This is a, a rolling thing. Mm -hmm. See that? Uh, for Fisa, piano effects. Uh, and he uses a couple of different synthesizers. Uh, what else we use guitar, sax. Yeah, rhythms almost. Yeah, very, very rhythmic when we get to record. Now you've got you've got three albums out now. The, yeah. the latest one. I'll just see if the camera can get a shot of this. Empires and Empires Dance. and Dance. Yeah. T-shirt. <laughs> Simple Minds T-shirt. Yeah. And it's on Zoom Records, and it's available in Canada through uh, W E A Music. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, the music business is a very, very cutthroat business. There are a lot of bands who are trying to make it into the spotlight, who want to get records released. And a lot of these bands are coming out of England these days, and out of Scotland and Ireland. Now we have the Boomtown Rats and a few others. How tough is it for a band to get recognition these days in your part of the world? Well, in Britain it's great just now. It's really broken up, and there's a lot of um, independence, just small, small companies. Um, start making records almost from the home, sending them to the uh, the, the DJs. And in Britain, it's 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 not it's still not great, but it's 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 getting wider that the DJ can just pick up, up the record almost and play it. I mean, not sort of peak time, you know. Um, this is more at night and nighttime radio. So word is spreading very fast. There's a good good enthusiasm, and um, it doesn't take it takes so long now in Britain for if not to get it. Um, a big, a big deal, but at least for to get um, well known, enthusiasm wise, there's a whole, whole new interest in music. Some people said, you know, after the new wave and punk thing, that music or rock and roll was dead and things. But I don't think that's true. It's just shedded its, its uh, 
uh, skin again, and there's a new a new wave of, of enthusiasm, a whole new a new fresh new breed of groups coming out yeah, also. Yeah. Well, how how Derek does does a group get popular? I mean. You don't have the radio facilities that you have here in America, so you don't get as much <coughs> airplay. There are live gigs, there's word of mouth. How does it happen? Well, the way we started really was to to build up a following in the one town in Glasgow. And then like, work your way into England and like, make demo tapes and go around the companies with that sort of thing. So, yeah. does it so we, we sort single? of brought press up, yeah, up to Scotland is... instead of go down to England and like everybody else goes to London and disappears sort of thing if you're from Scotland. So we, we says, get up there, get up there and watch the band. In so other words, you make them go yeah. to where you are because yeah, more, you want to keep your identity. Yeah, more and more bands are, that it used to be for the past 10 years, everyone went to the gold streets of London to, you know, to make it, which is just a joke. Now bands are staying in Glasgow and Manchester and Sheffield and the whole London thing's become very, uh, I don't know, jaded. Yeah, it's uh, not really many. Bigger London bands. The yeah. bigger bands are coming from like Manchester, Liverpool, and Scotland. Yeah, regional type type things. And the press in Britain's very good just now, in as much that it's very very open to um, what's happening outside. Just uh, a London empire. You built up a fairly decent following in England by now, and also in your in your home. But uh, how does how do you get to come to America like you did? What does it take? Does it take a record company to say, "Hey, you're you're ready," or does it take? No, this is all all self-financed by us. It's just um, we haven't uh, haven't really. Uh, well, this is our first time. You could say we came once to the states, but it's for two dates, um, and we it's our first time in Canada. But um, the people in the clubs that, that we have found are very enthusiastic, and um, you know the kind of little money you can pick up in the bigger places like, like New York and things can um, uh, help to finance. You go into some of the, the smaller towns and things. And although just now, like, although although um, the new bands aren't, you know, they're not getting peak time radio and things, the enthusiasm now in the States and in, from the, the people I've spoke to in Canada is there's a parallel between the enthusiasm there once was in Britain in 77. So although just now it's a little flame, I think, it can be a big, big fire. It's going to so blossom. I think so, yeah. That's the name of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, we wish you the best of luck doing it. Where do you go from here? A few more dates in Canada? Yeah, yeah. Toronto. Toronto, Ottawa, London. Yeah. Ontario. Good luck to both of you Thank and to you. the rest of the band. And come and visit us again next time you're around. Thank yeah. you.